An opportunity ball can be any offensive situation that presents itself through the course of a point that allows you to progress towards ending the point. How you choose to work with that opportunity may vary and is often determined by your match mentality and your style of play. Here are the options to consider for the various types of opportunity balls. The short ball opportunity offers several options, one of which is to attack the net on an approach shot. As we learned in part one of this series, the direction you choose on the approach has an impact on your ability to position at the net. Hitting the ball down the line, or down the middle when in the center of the court, will provide the shortest distance to good position at the net. Using the short ball to approach sets the stage for you to finish the point at the net. Some styles of play will prefer to take the short ball opportunity and go for an outright winner towards any open court. The open court opportunity ball usually comes as a result of using combinations of shots to open the court allowing you to finish the point with an offensive shot to the opening. If the opponent chooses to hit a shot in the course of a point that is not good for their position, this can also result in an open court opportunity for you. When the court is open, it is not necessary to aim for the lines with your shots and risk making errors. Be offensive but allow for margin of error. Using angle shots and drop shots allow you to take advantage of the opponent's short court pulling them off the baseline and creating the opportunity for you to finish the point. Your drop shots and sharp angles don't have to be winners, but are the setup to winning the point within the next few shots. I think the main thing on going forward is looking for the short balls and actually looking for the opportunity to go forward because if you don't look for it, then you just aren't going to get it. So you have to look for that opportunity. Do, do you build it up from, from your previous shots to, to try to get a shot to go in? Yeah, it depends on what I'm working on. Okay. You try to get some combinations in there because if you can use those combinations and you can actually have a plan or a pattern that you can use in a match. So that's important. It's terrific. A textbook finish to a point has the player in control of the point, taking the first opportunity ball and approaching the net, putting the opponent in the most difficult situation possible to have to come up with a winning shot. If the opponent is unable to execute a winning passing shot or lob, then the net player will have a chance to hit a volley or overhead, or oftentimes will win the point on a forced error by the baseline player. Basically, the net player uses the opportunity ball to force the opponent to have to execute the winners, relying on the fact that if the approach shots are effective, the baseline player will usually make more errors than winners, and in other instances produce shots that can be put away with volleys and overheads. With that in mind, some players are very effective in the role of the passing shots and lobs, and look forward to the challenge. These type players will often use angles and drop shots to bring you into net so they can pass you. The net position becomes a difficult place to be when you are up there without control of the point and on the defensive. When at the net, it is important to maintain a position that keeps you in reach of the down the line pass and the angle pass, yet in a position to cover the lob as well. For the player on the baseline, it is important to show variety in the use of your passing shots and lobs. Keep an eye on the position of the net player. If they play too close to the net, lob until they adjust their position. Once they start to position back to guard against the lob, then using your passing shots will become more effective. What do you do when you're five all and you're just nervous? As, you know you should beat them and you don't know if you're going to be able to beat them. And you know, it's relaxation. It's just thinking of each point, but it's difficult. I think that's one of the hardest things in tennis is just to play each point just as importantly as the previous one or the following one, not to get caught up in the score and how many points you have to win. Tactics is very simple. It's a combination of shots built around your strengths and your style of play. Let's take a look at the various options of tactical combinations and determine the objectives for each. The serve and volley tactic is effective for applying immediate pressure on the opponent's ability to pass you. This tactic eliminates the rally phase of the point, allowing the server to highlight their strengths at the net. The chip and charge tactic is used primarily against second serves 
where the returner advances to net behind the return of serve. This tactic is used to apply added pressure to the server's second serve and highlight the returner's strengths at net. A tactic that is created through the rally is a combination using a sharp angle to open the court followed by an offensive shot to the opening. A combination that can be used especially when the opponent tends to hit towards the center of the court is the corner to corner tactic which creates the options of hitting an offensive put away to the open court and at times hitting behind the opponent. A psychological type of tactic within the rally is the long point, often used to either establish momentum or to break the opponent's momentum, the objective of being consistent, playing a long rally, and trying to outlast your opponent can be very effective. Using a variety of shots like high loopers and slice will throw off the opponent's rhythm and timing, eventually frustrating them, causing them to make the error. Many aggressive baseliners look for the opportunity to surprise attack using the swinging volley tactic. Very effective against a high looping ground stroke in the rally, the swinging volley allows the player to force their way into net without having to wait for a short ball. A tactic designed to force the opponent into net would be the drop shot and lob or pass combination. This combination works well against players with weaknesses at net. Against players who are strong at net, the drop shot and lob tactic is still effective because the opponent will be at net, but not in control of the point. Attacking players rely on the pattern of deep down the line and short angle cross court for approaching and finishing the point off at net. This pattern in a one-two punch allows them to position at net, open the court, and finish strong with an angle cross court put away. I want to be a top player in order for me to be number one. I'm going to have to come to the net more, make that choice, my decision, my mind first. So what, what both you girls have really decided is that coming forward is probably your forte to, to really reach the, the ultimate in the ranking. I definitely would think so because, you know, the greatest players like Pete Sampras and Boris Becker, all the greats, they all came to the net. They also had ground strokes. It's also important to be consistent because you can't always come to the net. You have to have a mix-up in your game. It just can't be one-dimensional. Now that you've seen both parts of winning with your game, I have to tell you about the other side of the story. You've seen the court positions, the percentage shots. You've worked that combination of shots to get the shot that you want. And all of a sudden, there's some technique failures or your mind just sort of boggles. And you just can't execute the shot that you've worked so hard to get. That's when I want you to dig down deep. Dig down deep and find a way to win no matter what breaks down. But if you go back to the drawing board and have both the knowledge of winning with your game and be able to do it when everything else breaks down and you have the winning attitude, the scoreboard is going to say that you win a lot of the times that you battle.